Eleanor Roosevelt has been in the White House for more than eight years when America enters World War II. She's established herself as an independent-minded and politically engaged First Lady. With FDR disabled by polio, she's become his eyes and ears, pushing forward social programs. And now she throws herself into the war effort. In October 1942, Eleanor travels to Britain, becoming the first First Lady to make a major trip abroad without her husband. It's a perilous undertaking. Britain is being bombed by the Germans. Ignoring the weather and the proximity of enemy aircraft, Mrs. Roosevelt travels on to an ATS training center to learn more. On a tour of Canterbury in the south of England, the dangers soon become apparent. Within a matter of hours of her leaving, 50 German fighter bombers came over in the dusk, sowing death and destruction again among the homes of Canterbury. In London, she sees the devastation of Nazi air raids. Eleanor's visit does much to cement the relationship between Britain and America. Winston Churchill, the British Prime Minister, cables FDR saying, Mrs. Roosevelt has been winning golden opinions here for her unfailing interest in everything we are doing. The following year, Eleanor travels to the Pacific to meet American troops fighting the Japanese. In Guadalcanal, a place of particularly brutal fighting, she meets soldiers preparing to go into battle. Touring hospitals, she tends the wounded. As First Lady, she represents the human, caring face of the presidency. Her care for the soldiers and their families runs deep. She reviews the standard letter sent to the families of servicemen killed in action, redrafting it with a more humane tone. She's driven by a great sense of duty and of the debt owed to these troops. During her Pacific trip alone, she meets an astonishing 400,000 servicemen. They are, to Eleanor, the sons of the nation. Every man who fights for us is in some way our man. His parents may be of any race or religion, but if that man dies, he dies side by side with all of his buddies. All the men are our men, part of our United States, which they have saved so that we can still call it the land of the free and the home of the brave. 